For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Teams. This is Matt Money Shots. Never the Mad Cheese, as always. One of the most common requests that I get in my comment section is how to score more in the red zone. Some red zone plays. So, in today's video, I'm going to give you guys my top five red zone plays, all of them from different depths. But before I do, if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future, please make sure to be subscribed and hit the like button in the comment section. And if you need more help with more money plays, you can download any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking links in the description or the top pinned comment. Now, my first tip in the red zone is it's probably best to try to run the ball, especially if you're really close to the goal line. Obviously, if you're on like the one yard line or stuff like that, the QB sneak and the fullback dive are still the preferred option. But if your opponent's blowing that up, you can still always run the ball out of like a traditional I form close or a single back deuce close. These are all very good uh, formations to run with. And I typically prefer things like the stretch run. So let's go and let's pick that. On defense, we're just going to match with a random 4-3. Like I said, if you're close to the goal line like this, it's always best to try to run it because there's less bad things that could happen if you can run the ball. Typically, if you pass, there's way more worse things that can happen. You get knocked backwards on a sack. You could throw an interception because there's so much tight space. So the safest thing to do is to try to pound it in because, especially with stretch runs, because you could always stretch it out like that. You can see right there, I really didn't have the edge, but I could always bounce it outside. And you can really run from any formation. A lot of times I'll come out, even when I'm close to the goal line like this, like say on a two-point conversion or something like that, I'll come out in a stack Y flex look, which is a shotgun look, because it puts my opponent in, two, in, a, in a situation where they really have to choose between two very different outcomes. They could either match with something that'll have enough DBs on the field to cover the three wide receivers, or they could overcommit to the run and still try to pick something um, that's, you know, really run heavy, which will give me the advantage when it comes to passing. So it really depends on what your opponent does at this point, but you're really going to play the weakness here. So let's say that they match in something like this. And I have a, you know, at this point, they're matching to the point where it makes more sense to try to run once again. So I could really try to, you know, basically just hit them with that inside zone and get a very easy touchdown that way. Or if they overcommit to the uh, to, to stopping the run, say they come out in something like a 4-3 even, like this, or something really large, now it's not really my best benefit, but it is a little bit better to pass. So now I have the opportunity to try to hit him with a passing concept because there's less speed on the field. Now, running the ball is a really good option, but you could also kick it up a notch with an RPO, which is going to make it even harder to stop. Some of the better ones to use are things like the Stretchler Bubble out of the iForm slot. This is one of my personal favorites. I also like to use uh, something out of Shotgun. I like to use the, because uh, I also I like to use the normal while I've closed a lot. So I like to use the RPO Zone Alert Omaha, which I think is a little bit better because you have a secondary passing option with the tight end on the other side. Well, not the tight end, but the receiver regardless. So let's go and let's pick that. We'll continue to match with Big Nickel over G. I find these plays are best to run from a hash mark to the short side of the field just because it can have an effect on the cornerback or the safety in front of the wide receiver. To run this play, you really just have to watch the cornerback or the receiver there, or the cornerback in front of the receiver. And if he doesn't drop down immediately, you can just throw it out and typically run wide for uh, for the touchdown or for the you know for the first down, whatever. As that's just one of the better ways to run it. I don't know what defense I'm looking at, but like I said, if he doesn't drop down like right here, I'm gonna be able to get outside just as long as I get a good catch and run because that's just how these plays are designed. And I get a better look if I run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field like I am. One of the better ones when it comes to uh, actually having a better run play is gonna be the I-form slot, uh, where you basically have a stretch run, which is much better than an inside zone in this scenario. So let's go and let's pick that. We're going to pick, we're gonna match a random 4-3. When it comes to this play here, I mean, I could tell right away what the best option is before the snap, because we have two receivers on the one side, which means that if there's no cornerback out here on the other side, that it's a man coverage. And man coverages typically stop these plays. You'll see if you watch the B receiver that that cornerback's going to drop down on him right away or follow him. And that just gives me a better option to go with the stretch run. And I know that before the play even starts because of the alignment pre-snap. But if you see a cornerback out here, you know it's probably going to be a zone coverage. And in these scenarios, you're just going to want to throw it out to this uh, to this bubble screen one more time as we have you know a very easy indicator on what to do uh, when it comes to this play pre-snap. If it's a man coverage, you're typically going to want to keep it stretched, and if it's a zone coverage, you're typically going to want to throw it to the bubble screen. It's really that easy. But now I'm actually going to get into some money play concepts. And one of my favorite is out of the stack Y flex. If you guys don't know, especially when I'm close to the goal line, the drive H wheel is one of the hardest plays to stop. And I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys a full setup. I just used this play, but I didn't show you guys the actual setup that I like to use. On defense, we'll continue to match with Big Nickel over G because I'm going to be passing and I want to give myself a good challenge. So let's go and let's pick that. When it comes to this play here, there's a number of things you you can do you can see how the cornerbacks are so close to the line of scrimmage because there's not a lot of space 
Uh, one of the things I like to do is to the running back because the running back on this route is pretty hard to stop, especially if you stretch it out like that. You can see right there, it's really nothing going to stop me from getting those two yards aside from hard flat set to zero. Now, if I get this hard flat set to zero, one of the things that I like to do also is put this X receiver on a slant. And I can put the Y receiver on an in. And I typically want to try to um, smart route it, but obviously I'm so close it's not going to change. And this will give me a lot of options over the middle. But like I said, if I do this, the running backs first, as you can see, there's really no defense that's going to stop that running back because it's such a it's just a route that works against just about everything. Although, like I said, if your opponent is hard flatting, that can be an issue. But even if they do cover that, I have a lot of crossing route issue or crossing route plays. Uh, over the middle and there I hit the Y receiver a lot of times I'll hit the slant now the next play should be found in a lot of different formations I'm in the gun normal while off close though and the play is gonna be the mesh spot you can find this in things like um, the wing slot offset will have it as you can see we have a very similar one there but like I said I personally like to use the most out of the normal while off close let's go and let's pick that I'm gonna continue to match with uh, with big nickel over G this is a concept that can really work from anywhere from five yards and in and the running back is still a really good option as you can see right there it must have been a, a zero blitz because he was wide open uh which you'll get anytime you see that it also gets open underneath a lot of zones but i'm really going to be working the crossing routes at this point as you can see we get another blitz there and these drags one of these drags is going to get open every single time now the further back you get the easier it is just to use the hash marks glitch uh, where you could basically just do a corner route with a street concept. So from 10 yards out, let's go and let's pick the Z spot, which is going to be one of my more favorite plays. So when it comes to uh, scoring from distance, like I am here, it's sometimes it's easier to score from 10 yards, 15 yards away, simply by being on a hash mark and working a concept where you have a corner route, which is with the tight end running, and putting a, putting the B route on a streak. I'll give myself a check down a lot of times underneath just in case um, he doesn't get open. But you'll see how he basically can get this look every single time. That's from 10 yards out. We can move it back and do it from 15 yards out. As all you really need is a corner route and something pulling back the other defender. As you can see right here, we're getting touchdowns from 10 yards, 15 yards, 20 yards. It should all be the same. As it always works best from a hash mark to the short side, because that's how the hash mark glitch, glitch typically works. As you can see, it's a 10 yard difference, but the play's working every single time, whether you're from the 10, the 15, or the 25. And this concept will work from just about any corner route concept. So if I pick the drive H wheel, it'll have a similar effect, but it won't have a similar effect if I'm running it to the open side of the field. As you'll be able to see here that um, I can have some success, uh, but it's not going to be the same. It always works best running from a hash mark to the short side of the field. So let's go and let's move the ball across and we'll see that it'll work the exact same way as it was uh, working on the Z spot. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Like I said, here now, got a little bit uh, you know, more space. As you can see, it's just how the, the it reacts when you're on a hash mark to the short side of the field. The, the safety drops back, or the cornerback the that's playing the deep zone coverage drops back to the point where this guy's just gonna get open outside. As you can see, this guy's pulling the route, this guy's going to get wide open, and we're going to have that touchdown from anywhere inside the 20 to the 10-yard line. So I'm going to go to my end of the video there. I showed you guys a lot of different concepts that work really well when it comes to scoring inside the red zone from different depths. If you guys want to see more from some of the offenses, the offensive formations that I showed you, like the gun stack, Y flex, or the gun normal Y off close, we'll have those uh, full schemes popping up on screen. So just click the links, check that out. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.